I don't know if you've heard, but there is no salvation outside of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I know that some of you are probably cringing and thinking, boy, this ain't going to win us any friends. Catholic priests say that outside the Roman Catholic Church, there is no salvation. But should you believe that? Is salvation found in the Catholic Church? That's what we're talking about today. I'm Jenny Martin, and you're watching the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Dear friends, joining this week are Brother Donald Pinnock in Toronto, Canada, Brother Ruben Bustos in Los Angeles, California, and Brother Bernard Daos in San Francisco, California. Brothers, thank you for joining us this week. Hello, Hello Brother, Brother Johnny. Johnny. Now, brothers and dear friends, when it comes to discussing salvation, not only should the biblical truth be proclaimed, but also false teachings should be exposed. And it should be done out of love for our fellow men because something crucial is on the line, that is, the salvation of man. Because most often we, members of the Church of Christ, discuss this issue with our fellow men who are Catholics, and because they are the majority in certain parts of the world, we will study which church bears the qualities of the church that will be saved. Is it the Roman Catholic Church or the Church of Christ? But let's watch another video where a Catholic priest talks about salvation and the Catholic Church. Are we sacrificing ourselves and telling people about the joys of the Catholic Church, outside of which there is no salvation, right? Look that up in, the, in your little Google. Only in the church, the Catholic Church, is it outside the church, there is no salvation. And Google that and you'll see pages and pages of teachings from the councils, from the fathers of the church, from various theologians. How important that is. How important that is. Because there's people who are out in the world, they think they're in the right church. They think they're adoring God, but they're not adoring Jesus Christ as he wants to be. In fact, many churches don't even believe Jesus Christ is God. All right? And of course, they don't believe in the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How are they going to be saved? All right, brothers, we've just watched that video clip uh, where that Catholic priest is making several statements. Now, what are your initial observations regarding the things he said? Brother Donald, if we could begin with you, please. Well, this Catholic priest, Brother Johnny, states that there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. Salvation is only inside the Catholic Church. He also mentioned about pages and pages of teachings from Catholic councils, from their church fathers, and even theologians in order to substantiate his claim. You know, brothers, the uh, Catholic priest also mentioned that people in other churches who think that they adore or worship our Lord God, he says that they are not doing it in the way that God wants it to be done. And because of this, according to this Catholic priest, well, it seems that he says that outside of the Catholic Church, well, people are not able to render proper worship to our Father in Heaven. Another interesting point is that the Catholic priest made a statement that if a church would believe or not believe that Jesus is God, or if a church would not accept the belief of the Trinity where God is three persons but in one, then according to the Catholic priest, that church doesn't have the salvation. So for him, the true church that has salvation believes that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are God. Well, okay, brothers, you know, when it comes to knowing or identifying the church that will be saved, what guidance does the Bible give? What must the true church bear in order to be saved? And does the Catholic Church have it? Brother Donald, if we could uh, begin with you, please. Allow me to read the following, Brother Johnny, from Acts 4, the verses are 10 and 12. Be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God hath raised from the dead, even by him this man standeth here before you whole. Neither is there salvation in any other, 
For there is no other name under heaven given to men, whereby we must be saved. So what did the apostles teach concerning the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? According to what we have read, for there is no other name under heaven given to men, whereby we must be saved. So man needs to be saved through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, any church that does not bear the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is no salvation in that church. Now, Brother Reuben, how is the name of Christ called upon the true church? Well, we could read the answer, Brother Johnny, here in the book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 16. Salute one another with an holy kiss. All the churches of Christ salute you. Now, the Bible mentions the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is called upon the true church in this way. It is the church of Christ. So, dear viewers, let us ask ourselves this very important question. Which church bears the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Is it the Catholic Church or the Church of Christ? Well, clearly, the church that bears the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is the Church of Christ. Because of this, salvation is in the Church of Christ only. Well, Brother Bernard, does even the Pope of the Catholic Church accept this biblical truth that the Church of Christ is the one built for the sake of man's eternal salvation? Well, Brother Johnny, for that answer, let's read from a Catholic book entitled The Papal Encyclicals in Their Historical Context. Now, this book was edited by a Anne Fremantle, and this book summarizes in one volume all of the teachings of the Catholic Church as expressed by the popes in their official letters. Now, it's important to note that this book also has a Nihil Obstat by John Goodwine and an imprimatur by Francis Cardinal Spellman. Uh, excuse me, uh, Brother Bernard, before you read from that book, would you please explain to our viewers what it means when a Catholic book has a Nihil Obstat and an imprimatur? Sure, Brother Johnny, and excuse me, dear viewers. When we say that a Catholic book has a Nihil Obstat and an imprimatur, these are terms to, that signify that the publication or document that we'll be reading are official Catholic documents. In fact, Nihil Obstat comes from Latin, which translate to no objection or nothing stands in the way. And the word imprimatur stands for or translate to let it be printed. In short, dear viewers, the Nihil Obstat and imprimatur it means that Catholic authorities gave an official declaration that the publication is free from any doctrinal or moral error. All right, so what does that Catholic book say about salvation? Well, in that book, the papal encyclicals in their historical context on page 153, please listen to what is recorded. The Church of Christ, which has been divinely instituted for the sake of souls and of eternal salvation. Therefore, according to an encyclical or a letter written by a pope of the Catholic Church, it is the Church of Christ that is divinely instituted for the sake of souls and for eternal salvation. Hence, our Catholic friends should not be upset at us when we say that salvation is for the Church of Christ, for this is also what the pope of the Catholic Church has said. Now, dear friends, Church of Christ is not the name of the church that many people were born into and raised. The name of the church that they were brought up in is the Catholic Church. So let's now examine the name used by the religion called the Catholic Church. Brother Donald, what does the name of the Catholic Church mean? Well, we can read the following, Brother Johnny, from their book entitled Catholic Catechism. Book 2, on page 146, and this is stated. The word Catholic means universal, extending all over the world. So please notice the term Catholic means universal or widespread because it has members all over the world. In fact, according to the statistics coming from the Vatican office of the church, they state that there is approximately 1.2 billion Roman Catholics all over the world. However, sad to say, because of this, because of the understanding that there are many members of the Catholic Church throughout the world, well, this has led many people to believe that it must be the true Church. Again, because there are so many adherents. 
Now, Brother Ruben, is being many in number and being universal or widespread the basis in identifying which is the church that will be saved by our Lord Jesus Christ? According to Christ, will most people be saved? Well, to answer your question, Brother Johnny, the answer is no. Uh, this is what our Lord Jesus Christ mentioned here in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there are who go in thereat. Well, according to our Lord Jesus Christ himself, he mentioned that many have gone in, or entered the wide gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. So as far as numbers are concerned, Brother Johnny, uh, there are more people in the way to destruction than there are people who are on the way to eternal life. Being many and universal, which is what the Catholic Church is, does not prove that a church belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ and that its members will be saved. Now, Brother Bernard, if we're talking about the people who have been deceived and are headed toward destruction, how many has the devil or Satan deceived? Well, Brother Johnny, for that answer, let's turn once again to the Holy Scriptures. And please listen to what is recorded in the book of Revelation 12, 9. This is what we can read. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, who seduceth the whole world. And he was cast unto the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. How many has the devil deceived or seduced? According to the Holy Scriptures, the devil has seduced or deceived the whole world. Therefore, beloved viewers, being many in number or being universal, which is what the term Catholic means, according to the Bible, it's not a basis for salvation. It cannot be read anywhere in the Bible that the true church which Christ our Lord built was called by Him or by any of His apostles as the Catholic Church. Well, Brother Donald, do Catholic authorities admit that Christ and His apostles did not call the true church by the name Catholic? Yes, they do, Brother Johnny. And the proof is here from another Catholic book entitled The Question Box. Uh, this book also has a Nihil Ofstadt by Arthur Scanlon and an Imprimatur by Patrick Cardinal Hayes. And the said book was written by a Bertrand Conway, who is a Catholic priest, and he states the following on page 132. The name Catholic as a name is not applied to the Catholic Church in the Bible. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, writing to the Christians of Smyrna about the year 110, is the first to use the name the Catholic Church. Therefore, Catholic authorities acknowledge that the name Catholic is not applied to the church mentioned in the Bible. In fact, our Lord Jesus Christ and even the apostles, they never used the name Catholic. In fact, the first to use said phrase or term was none other than the Bishop Ignatius of Antioch in approximately the year 110 AD. By that time, the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, was already written. Therefore, what is it that we should notice? The name Catholic cannot be read in any books of the Bible. You know, brothers, we must remember also that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ should not be removed or detached from the name of the true church. Well, the reason is because this is the only name given by our Father for the salvation of man. So one of the ways by which we can identify the true church that our Lord Jesus Christ founded and that has salvation is its name. It is called the Church of Christ. Let's remember, it's not called the Catholic Church. Now, dear friends, besides the name, are there other qualities of the true church? When we come back from our break, let's examine another quality of the church that was built by Christ, and let's see which church bears that quality. You're watching the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. In the first part of our program, we learned that one of the qualities of the church that was built by Christ is that it bears the name of Christ. 
It is called the Church of Christ. However, besides the name, the true church has other qualities. Well, like what? What's another unique quality of the true church that will be saved? Well, before we get into that, let's watch this video about a former lay minister of the Catholic Church who became a member of the Church of Christ. Pag gano'n na nasa ating lay minister ka, mataas ang tingin sa'yo ng tao eh, para ka na rin pare. Nakatuwang ng mga pare na imbes na sila ang pupunta sa mga bar barangay, kami ang magbigay ng mesa sa barangay, magsubo ng ostya, magbigay ng mga aral, gano'n. Ako ang nakakasubok ng kon eh, paglilingkod ng Sabado at Linggo dahil maabot ng limang kon eh, limang simbahan yung Binibigyan ko ng serbisyo. Nasumpungan ko naman na lagi kong binabasa ang, ang pasugo. Kaya ako nagbabasa ng ganun bilang suporta sa ibibigay ko sa anong mga homily sa barangay. Kaya lang, unti-unti may natutuklasan akong pagkakaiba, pati sa paniniwala, ganun. Nakita ko, natuklasan ko, yung malaking pagkakaiba. Napag-isip-isip ko, ang tagal kong lay minister eh, ang tagal ko nagbabasa na ng Biblia, ngayon ko lang matutuklasan na hindi pala ganun. May doktrina tungkol sa isang Diyos. May doktrina para sa yung kapaniwalaan ng katoliko na tatlong persona na dapat isa lang ganun. At saka yung sinasabing si Yesu Cristo e eh, eh, tao. Yung mga bagay-bagay na yun, eh, kuan, muling nagbalik yung kuwan ko na balikan ng Biblia na suriin na uh, pag-aralan na ng gusto. Sabihan ako nung ministro sa aming lugar, sa lokal, oh, brother, baka pwede ka na namin kuhan, eh, maimbitahan na dumala ng pamamahayag bilang pagbibigay. At saka na, na, nasa kong kuna, na, nakukuha ko na nun na sa kalooban ko, talagang gusto ko na rin pumasok. Kaya nga nung kan, nung mga sumunod ng pagsamba ko, tuloy ko na, nagpresenta na ako mismo na dumaan ng doktrina. Observe ko sa pagsampasamba ko hanggang sa ako yung sinusubok na, natiyak ko na na dapat akong bumalik at ipagpatuloy yung paglilingkod sa Diyos. Nabutismahan na ako, uh, nakita ko na yung doktrina na talagang napakalaki ng pagkakaiba ito sa pagiging lay minister ko ng katoliko. Yung naiukul kong panahon doon eh, baliwala pala kung ikukumpira sa mga nalaman ko ngayon. Kasi useless yung pagiging 18 years kong lay minister. Brother, sister, kung ako man ay lumalapit ngayon sa iyo, gusto ko lang sanang ipagpauna na hindi ako mamimilit, yayayain kita na kung ano man yung naranasan, naranasan ko ngayon dito, eh, masumpungan mo din sana at magkasama-sama tayo na mapasama do sa mga sinasabing ililigtas ng ating Panginoon at marating natin yung yung banal na lugar at magkaroon ng buhay na, buhay na walang hanggan. Yun ang mag, magtutulak sa kanila na maintindihan nila kung bakit ako lumipat. Kung ano yung naramdaman ko nung ako'y nahikayat na mag-iglesia, ganun din sana yung mangyari sa kanila na magising sa katotohanan, mabuksan sa kanilang pangunawa 
na iisa lang pala ang siyang iglesia. Hindi na talangin ko na lang na kung paano ako kinantin ng Diyos na mapaanid dito sa iglesia ng ito, eh mangyari din sana sa kanila. Damandam ako ang pagkaimportante na ako'y kaanim na ng iglesia ngayon. Yun na nga, natuklasan ko na yung katotohanan, nauunawaan ko na. Talagang proud na proud na ako na ako'y naging membro ng iglesia ni Kristo. May pagmamalaki ko na ito at talagang hindi na ako bibitaw. Balang araw, mapagtanto nila na hindi ako nagkamali. You know, brothers, that was such a wonderful uh, convert story being narrated by Brother Rogelio about how he left the Roman Catholic Church and became a member of the Iglesia de Cristo or the Church of Christ. Now, brothers, uh, what were some of the things that he said uh, or even discussed that, that stands out for you? Brother Donald, if we could begin with you, please. As you mentioned, Brother Johnny, Brother Rogelio was a former lay minister of the Catholic Church. But he began to read the publications of the church, such as the Pasugo or God's Message magazine. And through regular reading, he began to notice a stark difference or contrast between the teachings that are being upheld inside the Church of Christ, totally based on the Bible, compared to the beliefs of the Catholic Church. Well, this is also our invitation to those who are not yet members of the church. Beloved viewers, let us avail of complimentary copies of the God's Message magazine and other publications of the church at the locale nearest to you. And also, we can avail of such articles and also videos that are posted online, for example, at incmedia.org or iglesianicristo.net. And we will also be enlightened to the reason why the members of the church are firm in their belief that they are in the true church that will lead to salvation. You know, uh, brothers, one of the uh, uh, differences that Brother Rogelio saw between these two churches was the belief about, uh, about God. In the Catholic Church, they believe that in one God there are three persons. This is called the Trinitarian Doctrine. And they believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is the true God. While inside the Church of Christ, well, we believe that the one true God is the Father only, and that our Lord Jesus Christ is a man. In fact, our faith or our belief regarding the true God is not something made up or based on one's ideology, but rather we know that it is based on the teachings of the Bible. Well, for example, a verse of the Bible that proves that there's only one true God and disproves the tr Trinitarian doctrine is 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. One verse of the Bible that proves that our Lord Jesus Christ is a man is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. These verses contradict uh, what the Catholic Church teaches regarding uh, one God, there are three persons, and that our Lord Jesus Christ is the true God. And Brother Ruben, it's important to note that when Brother Rogelio came to know about the teachings upheld inside the Church of Christ, whether by what he heard or by what he read in the Pasugo magazine, he made a very important decision. And that decision was to continue learning about the different teachings upheld by the Church of Christ. In fact, he wanted to prove to himself that the teachings, the doctrines upheld inside the Church of Christ were coming from the Bible. And this he proved for himself, which is what resulted in him leaving the Catholic Church and becoming a member of the Church of Christ. And this is the very reason we continue to extend our invitation and our welcome to all our viewers and friends to please come and join us in our worship services, in our evangelical missions, and in our Bible studies at any of the local congregations near you. Now, brothers, uh, let's get back to our discussion. Uh, Brother Ruben, this is our question. Uh, besides the name, the true church has other qualities. Now, what is another unique quality of the true church that will be saved? Well, Brother Johnny, we could read again from the Holy Scriptures uh, another quality of the true church. Uh, we will read from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 23. Because the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, he is the Savior of his body. The Bible makes it very clear 
who the head of the true church is, which, by the way, is another uh, identifying mark of the church that belongs to Christ and will be saved. The Bible clearly states to us that our Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church, which is His body. The Bible also mentioned another truth, that He is the Savior of this church, which is His body. That's why we can say that those who are separated or are not in the true church of Christ, that is headed by our Lord Jesus Christ, will not be saved. So one of the other qualities of the true church that belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ and will receive salvation is this, the Lord Jesus Christ is its head. Now, Brother Bernard, do Catholic authorities accept what this verse in the Bible says, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the true church? Well, Brother Johnny, for that answer, let's refer to a Catholic book entitled The Book of Catholic Quotations. This book was edited by a John Chapin, and let us read from page 126. No one, indeed, attains to salvation and eternal life, except he who has Christ as his head, except he who is in his body, which is the church. According to the Catholic authorities themselves, no one attains to salvation except he who has Christ as his head, or if he is in the body or the church. Therefore, Catholic authorities agree salvation is in the church of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head. Uh, Brother Donald, does the Catholic Church bear this quality? Uh, who is the head of the Catholic Church? In order to answer that question, Brother Johnny, let us read from another Catholic book. This one is entitled, A Catechism for Inquirers. And this book was written by Joseph Malloy, a Catholic priest, and also has a Nihil Obstat by William Hogan and an Imprimatur by James Hughes. And this is stated on page 17. In what sense is the Pope the head of the Church of Christ? Christ himself is the true head of the Church. The Pope is his vicar and chief representative on earth. So we should note the head of the Catholic Church is their pope who resides in the Vatican City there in Rome. But when we point this out, what do Catholic authorities claim? Well, they say that the popes are the successors of the first pope, the Apostle Peter. Therefore, even if they teach that the head of the church is the pope, they also teach at the same time that our Lord Jesus Christ is head of the church. So it appears as if they have two heads of the church. Well, uh, Brother Ruben, according to Catholic authorities themselves, if a church has two heads, is that the true church? Well, Brother, to find out the answer, we need to refer again to the Catholic book uh, that Brother uh, Bernard read earlier, which was the Book of Catholic Quotations, uh, uh, edited by John Chapin. Uh, we could read it from uh, page 701. We could read this. Therefore, there is one body of this one and only church, and one head, not two heads like a monster, namely Christ and Christ's vicar, Peter and Peter's successor. Now, what do you call a body with two heads? Well, according to Catholic authorities themselves, they say that such is a monster. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ's relationship to his church is likened to a man, in that a man is composed of one body with only one head. Our Lord Jesus Christ and His church make up the one new man, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. Therefore, brothers, any church that does not recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as its head, or any church that may recognize someone or something else as its head, meaning two or more heads, is not the church that can attest to attain salvation or eternal life. There is no salvation in any church that does not recognize our Lord Jesus Christ as its head, or a church that would recognize anyone or anything else other than our Lord Jesus Christ as its head. Well, dear friends, what else is a unique quality of the church that belongs to Christ and will be saved? What did the true church of Christ receive as a guarantee from God that it will be saved? Well, that's what we'll talk about next 
When we come back, the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition will continue. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, to the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. The question that we asked before the break was this one. What else is a unique quality of the church that belongs to Christ and will be saved? Uh, what did the true church of Christ receive as a guarantee from God that it will be saved? Brother Bernard, if we could begin with you, please. Well, for that guarantee, Brother Johnny, we will once again turn to the Holy Scriptures and we will read what is recorded in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. This is verse 21 and also verse 22. But the one who gives us security with you in Christ and who anointed us is God. He has also put his seal upon us and given the spirit in our hearts as a first installment. The one speaking in this passage is Apostle Paul. And he is speaking to the members of the true church of the Christ during his time. Now, what did God give as a guarantee to the true church? According to Apostle Paul, he says, God has also put his seal upon us, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, Brother Donald, what are those who have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, which was given to the true church, guaranteed of? Well, Brother Johnny, we can read the answer to that question here in Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. In him you also who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Again, what we have read is the pronouncement of the Apostle Paul to the members of the Church of Christ. What is it that he reminded them of? That they were sealed with the Holy Spirit. How were the members of the Church of Christ sealed with the Holy Spirit? They heard the word of truth, the gospel. Was it enough that they heard the gospel? The Apostle Paul also mentions they believed in it. Now why is it that they believed in it? Who taught unto them the gospel or the words of God? None other than the messengers or those sent by God. Now, what will be the result of those who believe in the gospel as taught by the messengers or those sent by God? They are not only sealed with the Holy Spirit, they also have the guarantee of salvation. Therefore, when it comes to the members of the Church of Christ, because we have heard and believed in the true gospel and have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, we also have that guarantee of attaining salvation. Uh, Brother Reuben, does the Catholic Church have that seal? Is that what the Catholic Church received? You know, what do Catholics receive? Well, Brother Johnny, to find out the answer, we need to read from a Catholic book entitled The Externals of the Catholic Church. Now, this book was written by John Sullivan, a Catholic priest. Uh, we can find the answer here on page 218. The ordinary method of making the sign of the cross is that which every Catholic learns in early childhood, the putting of the right hand to the forehead. According to what we have read, which sign do Catholics make? What is it that they receive? The so-called sign of the cross. Now, how is the sign of the cross made? By putting the right hand to the forehead first. Well, dear friends, let's watch this video where a Catholic priest talks about the sign of the cross and what it means to Catholics. Hi, this is Father Rocky, and welcome to Catholic 101. You get one lesson in one minute, and it costs you nothing. So here's the first lesson. It's the sign of the cross. If you ever see one, someone making the sign of the cross in public, I guarantee that they're Catholic. We use our right hand because Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father, and we go like this, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We touch our forehead, our heart, our two shoulders as we express the two chief mysteries of our faith. First, that God is a trinity of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And second, that Jesus died for us on the cross. And when you make the sign of the cross, 
you are acknowledging that you believe in Jesus Christ as God, and He gives you grace. Okay, brothers, we just watched that brief uh, video clip where that Catholic priest uh, was talking about the sign of the cross. Uh, brothers, uh, from the things that the priests mentioned, what are some of the things that stand out for you the most? Well, according to this Catholic priest, the cross is a mark that identifies Catholics. And Catholics are instructed to use their right hand, and the first part of the body that they touch is none other than their forehead. Now, uh, brothers, the sign of the cross is a way that Catholics express their faith that God is a trinity of persons. Now, this Catholic priest also said that when Catholics make the sign of the cross, well, they are acknowledging that they believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is God. Uh, well, Brother Bernard, when it comes to this sign of the cross, is the sign of the cross a mark of those who will be saved on the day of judgment? Brother Johnny, here is what the Bible answers in the book of Revelation, chapter 14. We will read verse 9 until verse 11. And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image, and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he shall also drink the wine of God's wrath, poured unmixed into the cup of his anger, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, these worshipers of the beast and its image, and whoever receives the mark of its name. What does the Bible say about those who receive the mark on their forehead and on the right hand? Like the sign of the cross which are made by the members of the Catholic Church, the Bible clearly says this is the mark of those who will be tormented with fire and brimstone. And what's even worse, Brother Johnny, is from such punishment, the Bible says, they will have no rest day or night. That's why, brothers, the sign of the cross is not a mark of those who will be saved. On the contrary, it is the mark of those who will be punished. Are we beloved viewers who are not yet members of the true Church of Christ, and perhaps there are those viewers who are still practicing Catholics, it is not our intention to hurt anyone's feelings. However, we want to present the truths that are written in the Bible. What is one truth presented in this part of our program today? that when it comes to the sign of the cross, it is not a sign of those who are being assured of salvation, but rather the Bible teaches this is a sign given to those who tragically they will perish come the day of the day of judgment. This also all the more goes to prove that when it comes to the Catholic Church per se, it is not the church wherein there is the assurance of salvation. According to the Holy Scriptures, which church has that guarantee or assurance of salvation. It is none other than the members of the church built by Christ, the church that bears His name, the Church of Christ. Now, beloved friends, are we proclaiming this truth because we want to keep salvation only to ourselves as what others wrongly assume? Well, the answer is no. Our holy and noble purpose is for others who do not know yet the way to be saved from eternal punishment to come to know and understand the truth. Well, Brother Donald, what chance is God giving to our fellow men and our friends in the Catholic Church so that they will be saved from His punishment? In order to answer that question, Brother Johnny, allow me to read Revelation 18 and the verses 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Go out from her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Here there is mention of come out of her, and the her being referred to, if we were to read Revelation 17, 1, is none other than a false church, a church that is likened to a great harlot that sits on many waters. In Revelation 17, 15, the many waters refers to peoples and multitudes, meaning to say, a church that is expansive, but not the true church, because the true church is likened to a chaste virgin, according to 2 Corinthians 11, 2. 
That is why the Lord our God says to this church that is not his church, not the true church, come out of her. So those who are within the church that does not have the assurance of salvation, they need to exit, they need to leave that church, even though that is only the first step. Well, you know, our Protestant friends might say, well, we came out of the Catholic Church, so we are going to be saved. However, is it enough simply to go out from the Catholic Church in order to be saved? Uh, where does our Lord Jesus Christ require all those who want to be saved to enter or come into? Well, Brother Johnny, we could read the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ here in John chapter 7, or rather chapter 10, verses 7 and 9, this is what we could read. So Jesus spoke again, In very truth I tell you, I am the door of the sheepfold. I am the door. Anyone who comes into the fold through me will be safe. Now where does our Lord Jesus Christ require all those who want to be saved to enter? He says, I am the door. Anyone who comes into the fold through me will be safe. So for people to be saved, it is unavoidable that people come into the fold that our Lord Jesus Christ was talking about. Uh, Brother Bernard, what is that fold or flock that people should come into in order to be saved? Brother Johnny, to answer that question, we don't want to give our own opinion or any interpretation. Once again, we will turn to biblical testimony as recorded here in the book of Acts, chapter 20, and the verse is 28. Take heed therefore to yourselves, and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. What is the fold or flock in which our Lord Jesus Christ commanded anyone who wants to be saved that they must enter into that fold or flock? The Bible is clear. The flock is the church of Christ. And this is why on behalf of the members of the church of Christ, we followed this teaching of our Lord Jesus when we entered and became a member of the Church of Christ. That is why we firmly believe and we are confident, we are certain that we have followed and entered the fold through Him. We are certain to be included among those redeemed by His precious blood. And we are sure that we are in the Church that is the body of Christ. We are in the Church that is headed by our Lord Jesus Christ. We are in the Church that bears His name and that has the guarantee of salvation. This is why we became members of the Church of Christ. But we need to ask a very important question, brothers. Is it enough just to be a member of the church in order to be saved? Well, there's something else that we need to do. As members of the true Church of Christ, we need to remain until the end. Now, let us not depart or separate from our membership inside the church. We should never draw back no matter what happens in our life. We should never turn our back on our membership or our divine election. What we should do, beloved brothers and sisters, is strive to be more active and devoted to our being members of the true Church of Christ. The reason behind this is because we are absolutely sure that this church, the church that bears all the qualities of the true church, which our Lord Jesus Christ will save. So what is our invitation to those who are not yet members of the Church of Christ? Well, we invite you to come to listen to the words of God being taught from the Holy Bible by the ministers of the Church. Primarily, especially if there is a local congregation of the Church near to where you reside. Or you can contact the Church of Christ. Again, when it comes to our websites, there are various means by which you can get to know about the reason why us members of the Church of Christ are so adamant and fervent in our faith that we are on the path that leads to salvation. Well, dear friends, we'd like to thank Brother Donald Pinnock in Toronto, Canada, Brother Ruben Bustos in Los Angeles, California, and Brother Bernard Daos in San Francisco, California, for giving us Bible-based answers. So that as the Apostle Peter said to the members of the church, you will be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are, which we could read in 1 Peter 3, 15. Well, dear friends, that does it for us here on the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. We hope you'll join us again next time. I'm Jenny Martin, and thank you very much for watching. 
And as we come to the end of the program, we invite you to join us for a short prayer. Our almighty and loving Father in heaven, yes, Father. Yes, we joy Father. in our hearts, we draw near unto you through prayer once again. Yes, Thanking yes, you so much for your guidance throughout this episode of our program. Yes, may yes, be Father. that what was presented may help our friends, Amen. our loved yes, ones who are not yet members of thy church, yes. to seek out yes, more Father. of your truths. Yes. That they may come yes, to the knowledge of why it is so important to enter the Church of Christ. Amen. That they in turn yes. can share in the rights and privileges that you have granted unto us. And the confidence yes, of Father. attaining salvation on the second advent of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Amen. Our Lord Amen. Jesus Christ, may you please mediate our prayers unto the Father. Yes, Lord. Seated yes, as you Lord. are at the right hand of the Almighty God. Yes. And may you also continue yes, to bless your church in its totality. Yes. That it may yes, reach Lord. out to more peoples that they will also have the opportunity to enter therein and also yes. be saved on the day of your return. Amen. Almighty Amen. God, once again we pray unto you. It is our yes. faith that you have heard our humble supplication. Yes. Your blessings yes. are flowing to each and every one of us, yes. including our yes. beloved viewers. Yes. For all of this yes. we ask for in the precious name of thy Son, our Lord, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.